Hey, Miss Peter, have a great vacation. water. That'll do it. A cold rush to the brain and I'll be just fine. But just in case, I'll lock the door. Is anybody there? Hello? I can hear you talking. I know someone is out there. Show yourself. No, no, need not to be afraid. We will not harm you. We only smell food and we are hungry. That's why we came over to your cottage. We? Yes, we are all here. All five of us, actually. But what do you want from me? We would like to eat with you, but not you, though. We would like to have a conversation as well. We don't have to come inside. Not really. We can go back into the wilderness as you put the food on the porch for us, if it makes you feel better. How, 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 how is this possible? This can't be right. First animals, I mean bears that is, don't walk on two legs and secondly they certainly don't chat as humans. And in perfect English, I got it. I'm still asleep. That's it. I'm dreaming. I assure you, ma'am. You're wide awake right now, actually. You're not dreaming at all. We only show ourselves in this fashion to those who believe in the unbelievable. Well, quite frankly, miracles. We are honored to meet you. You are the first. The first? Yes. You are the first official person to see us. We don't come out of hiding often because, because we're never sure who can see us and if they even understand. Understand? What is there to understand? It couldn't possibly be I'm having a conversation with a bear. Well, excuse me. What should I call you? I never got your name. Just call me Corey. Do you have names? Hmm. We all don't have names. Perhaps after feeding, you can give us a unique one. What do you say? Feed you? You don't eat from the wood? You do remember we were human, right? So what you eat, we eat. Oh, 
So I am to invite you into my home. We would greatly, greatly appreciate if you would invite us into your home. Well, since you're almost human, oh, oh, all right, that would be fine. I've never had lunch with a family of bears before. Follow me. Hey, look at you. You are a good looking group of bears. I'm glad my folks never cleaned the bedrooms of all the clothing. Once upon a time, there was a lady named Cory, and five little birds had she. Caleb, Omar, Rebecca, Robin, and Jancy. It's a Cory's parable story playhouse. Come along. Witness the Bible story, you can't go wrong. Come all along through the magic of the day, we'll all go. La la la, da da da, hey hey hey, ha ha ha. It's a Corinth parable. Hmm, now you all look just like me, human. We are mighty grateful. For everything. Thank you. We realized you didn't have to do this for us. So to go shopping, I mean, thank you. Honestly. I wanted to. And besides, I didn't have to do much shopping, just shoes. And I really enjoyed it. Excuse me, Corey. Where do you go from here if you don't mind me asking? Now that we look more like you. Stop! Put it down! That's my cup. Big Bear said so. I didn't do nothing. Why are you always trying to get me in trouble? I said no such thing, you two. I will not tolerate misbehavior, especially in front of our new friend. I know it's been a while since you had something to drink from a cup, but that does not mean you can fight. <laughs> I was just about to share my concern about your food supply, but I'll share my thoughts later. Right now... I think I will give each of you names. So finish up your lunch and your drinks and we'll get started. Mmm. Now you all look just like me, human. K for Caleb. O for Omar. R for Raven. R for Rebecca, hmm, and a great big, big Y for the wise old Yancey. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you. Finally. Finally, now our transaction is complete. Transition? In becoming as close as I can to be a full human again. <laughs> I was just about to share my concern about your food supply. Yes, again. You have done it. You made it possible. The first step was seeing us. We have waited a long time for this. And giving us names, that means a lot. Well, I... That is... It wasn't. That, that, that big of a deal? Or perhaps are you wondering how is giving us names bringing us closer to our human? Don't, Yancey. You have to understand how it all appears to me. I don't. Finding it believable? What do you mean? Well, whichever one you were thinking, it was mighty big to us. We can't name ourselves. We tried. Believe me, 
We tried. It's not that. I just need to hear it again. You know what happened. I need to hear the story again. I just have to absorb it all. That's all. Will you tell me again, please? Please tell me again how you ended up here and in the form of human. You can name us, you clothe us, and you even fed us. Yet you don't believe our story? You don't believe me, huh? Well, how would you explain us then? I simply don't know. What you shared with me is... Hard to believe. Hmm. Yet you're speaking to us. You can see us, and you're not afraid of us. Heck, we're even in your home. What is there not to believe? Do you not believe in what you're doing? We've been outside in the woods surrounding your cabin for five years, over five years. But you're the first to see us. Five years, and I'm the first to see you? Probably even a lot longer. I, no, we've been here for so long we lost track of time. It all seems to flow together. And so you see, we've been waiting for someone special. Someone like you, a dreamer. A dreamer who can see the unseen. I haven't traveled. Not in a long time. All right, kids, if you want to eat, I expect you over here with me unloading this food right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we were just, just about, about right now. Honey, I thought you had everything. I thought I did. Anyways, I'll be right there just getting the music and game. Would you gather the children on your way back? Okay, but you know they can hear you, right? Okay, that's right. We can hear you. To a place I haven't been in a very long while. Time traveling and memory. <laughs> I guess you do. He's a time traveler. Yancey, he's the one. He's the oldest, so he was given the higher power from the light. I mean, to travel, that is. And he makes the doors open, too. You know, the one you saw us come through? He whispers something and the door simply appears. Yeah, he's the only bear in the whole wide, wide world that can do that. The rest of us just sit back and enjoy the ride. Where did you go, Yancey? It wasn't a good place, was it? What happened? We, that is my family and I, were just like you once upon a time. You know, human beings, we did recently moved to Wyoming, and the kids were eager to go to National Park. Yellowstone National Park, that is. It was our first visit. And Get, 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 get. 
What happened? What do you what do you think of the whole situation? I was thinking I was thinking that all of you are nice, very friendly, but you don't like being here and you don't like being like what you are. And you think we don't like being special? We are special, you know. We don't look like you. But Yancey said that what happened, well, what happened was just for us. Our family has a divine purpose to stand out from the rest. You found us and we'll find the purpose together, right? I didn't mean to imply. It's just that, that I... Thought you, perhaps you wanted help returning home. I don't know why I'm the only one that can see you. And, and you must know that I'm here in this cabin only for a small period of time. Two months to be exact. I'm on vacation. I can't make you promises on that small amount of time. I just think, I just think it, if you're a time traveler, just transport yourself back to your home. So you're leaving us? Is that what you're saying? We're not going to be a family? Hey, cheer up. Lift your head up. There's no reason to be down about this. All you need is a little faith. In fact, let me show you how far faith can actually take you in life. A long time ago, there was a prophet named Samuel, sent by God to find the future king of the Israelites. Then God spoke. He told Samuel to go to Jesse's house in Bethlehem. There he will find the new king that will rule over all of Israel. Now David was just a young boy. He had seven older brothers, but none of them was quite like David. David was special. There was something different about him. Yes, this was the boy, no, the king that Samuel was looking for. As of right now, David would take care of the sheep, protecting them from any type of harm or danger that might come their way. This was his job, and he was pretty good at it too. But one day, David brothers was called off the battle to serve Israel. And when David asked to come along, they said, no, David. You are too young, too small, and far too weak to come along. You would just be in the way. This made David upset. Now the battle between the Philistines and the Israelites is about to begin. You can hear the two armies approach each other. The ground is rumbling. You can hear the clanging of metal. You can feel how intense this battle is about to be. But before the battle can unfold, the Philistines had a giant on their side. He marched across the field, his legs as huge as tree trunks, his arms as strong as steel, in which each step he took, he shook the very ground beneath us. <laughs> I am the great Goliath, and you, you all are just puny insects serving King Solomon. But who will step forward and fight me in battle? Because if I shall fall, my men will serve me. But if I am the last man standing, my men will own you for eternity. But no one, no one wanted to fight Goliath, not even King Saul. And so, every morning and evening, for 40 days, Goliath would go to the center of the field and shout his war cry. Will anyone challenge me today? And no one would answer. One day, while hiding behind a rock, David overheard Goliath's war cry. David was so confused. Why won't anyone oppose him? Why won't anyone try? This made David very upset. He needed to say something. And so, David stood in front of the Israelites and spoke to them. 
Why? Why won't anyone oppose him? Why won't anyone try? It doesn't matter how big or how strong a life is, as long as we have God by our side, there is no obstacle we can't overcome. And King Saul overheard David speak of such courage and bravery. He had to meet him. He had to know what makes him so different. What makes him so brave? I? And what and what am I wearing? Oh my goodness. Is that Omar? And, and Yancey? Remember since we went through the door? Yancey is King Saul and Omar is David. Please, sir, don't be afraid of the giant. With God's help, I will fight the giant. I will fight the giant for you and all of Israel. David, what makes you different? Why are you not scared of Goliath like the rest of my men? Goliath is bigger than you, stronger than you, and faster than you. He trained for moments such as this. You have been herding sheep all your life. Heck, you haven't even trained to be a warrior at all. Why is there no fear in your heart? Explain to me. Uh, it is true. I am young and small. But with God's help, I will be able to do it. If God helps me with my sheep, I know he'll give me the strength to defeat Goliath. So please, sir, allow me to fight for you and for the people of Israel. Okay, little David. And let God be with you. So that's how it went down? Go get David battle ready. Go get him my finest sword, shield, and armor. I'm sorry, your majesty. Not to be rude, but I won't need your sword nor shield. God's help is the only armor I need. Not worry for him, Cora. He has God on his side. Along with Omar, rather David, keeps faith as size of a mustard seed. He can move a mountain. So I'm sure defeating Goliath won't pose much as a threat. Back when we were human, Omar was often bullied and picked on in school. This is a great opportunity for him to overcome his fears, as well as a teaching lesson for him to realize putting his faith, trust, and belief in God will allow him to overcome any obstacle in life. King Solomon, do you really think he can defeat me, the almighty Goliath? No. Tell. Do you think you can defeat Goliath, the giant?
Oh my God, Yancy, that was amazing. I didn't know it was going to be like that. <laughs> I guess that was fun. I hope you learned a lesson after all of this. Yeah, I guess I did learn a lesson. I'm glad you learned a lesson. Now we can go on adventures and explore, learning more lessons as we go along. And it will all begin when I clap my hands.